smells like bug spray and shoe polish had a baby with maybe some pine salt mixed in. Hey everyone, it's Lucy from KeyBeautyHobby.com. It's been a while since we've done a fails video, so let's do it. These are in no particular order and these are my recent fails. The very first one makes me so sad. Look how beautiful this is. It's Clavos, Clevos, Clavos. I think it's Clavos. It's a shampoo with Rumora. I've never heard of that herb, but I think that's what, it's an actual leaf in here. I mean, look at it. It was even prettier, but then I kind of twisted the top and it, I don't know, changed the leaf around a little bit here, but whatever. It's so beautiful and it's marketed for oily scalp, which I thought, great, that's what I have. Let's do it. It smells magnificent. I can't even describe it. I don't know if that's what Remora smells like or if it's some other fragrance they put in it. I don't care. It's amazing. It comes out as this see-through gel and it foams so gently and it rinses so nicely and it's this fragrant amazing experience. Unfortunately it cleans like crap. It just does not get my hair clean at all and I've tried this multiple times and you can see there's quite a bit gone so I've tried it five or six times before completely giving up. So typically I can get away with washing my hair every other day. There's nothing wrong with washing your hair every day. And in fact, dermatologists will tell you, go for it if you have an oily scalp. But I'm kind of lazy, so I like to do it every other day. And plus to help keep my henna bright, I try not to wash daily because it washes out or it gets dull. So every other day, and my hair looks fine. I usually don't need to use dry shampoo or anything like that. With this, so shampoo at night usually, let it air dry and then go to bed. With this, my hair is oily by next morning. So not even 12 hours later, it's oily. The roots look greasy. I thought, well, maybe I got conditioner on there. Nope, that's why I tried it so many times. I've tried it with different conditioners and without conditioner at all. I tried air drying it. I tried blow drying it. I've tried everything I could think of to make this work. And it's not a cheap product. I think it's almost $40. I got it at PR, SPR. I was able to choose it. So I, I get to choose my PR sometimes, so I chose it, but I didn't pay for it, but still makes me so sad. On the bright side, it makes a really good body wash, so that's how I'm going to use it. However, 40 bucks for body wash, a little bougie, so yeah. Next is this, and this is such a horrible fail. It is Sioris SPF 35, You Are My Shining sunscreen. They weren't joking when they named this You Are My Shining. To elaborate, you will be shining like a greasy mess for the rest of the day after using it. This does not sink in, period. It does not dry down. It stays sticky, white casted, which is impressive on somebody fair like me, and just greasy, and I hate it, and I, I can't stand it. And it's, again, not cheap. It was PR that I picked, again. My battery just died mid-shoot. Anyway, this sunscreen, don't buy it. It's not good. And I end up using it on the tops of my feet because I get really weird sandal tan lines and I can tolerate it there, but that's hardly a good use for something and this wasn't cheap, like I said. Next is this Audrey and Young Sika Biome Cleansing Balm. It looks like this. Normally I wash out my packages before recycling them, but this one I haven't washed yet because I just wanted one last whiff of this fail while I'm talking to you about it. Smells like bug spray and shoe polish had a baby with maybe some pine salt mixed in. It's a cleansing balm that's actually not bad as far as getting your makeup off and sunscreen and all that other stuff, but it just smells so horrible. And I normally don't mind fragrances, even if I don't love the scent, I can usually tolerate it. But this specifically is just awful. It seriously smells like furniture polish. I don't know, it's... Mmm. I suffered through it because I couldn't in the right conscience try to pass it on to any of my friends. Like, here you go, I hate the smell of it, do you want it? Mm. I've done that with some things that just smelled too strong for me, but the scent was fine, like really, really fruity or just very perfumed. I have a couple of friends that like really, really strongly scented items and that's fine, but this one straight up stinks and so I couldn't really offer it up to people in good conscience, but dang, and I suffered through it. I just finished it last night and I'm so happy that it's done. Next is this iUnique Lime Moisture Mild Peeling Gel. I still can't figure out what is wrong with this thing. So if you've ever used a peeling gel, you know that it gets applied to dry, clean skin. 
it's usually a gel of some sort. A lot of the times they look kind of milky, like cloudy. And you rub it on gently and it peels into these cellulose little balls, taking some of the dead skin with it, and then you rinse it off. They all work basically the same way. I mean, they're all different, some are better, some are worse, but that's the basic way that they work. For some reason, this one, around the periphery of my face, those little cellulose balls, they just stick there and then they don't come off. And at first I thought, well, maybe it's the peach fuzz. Well, I have peach fuzz all over. That's not that. I tried this a couple days after shaving my face because I, I usually shave my face. Uh, I don't know, I just like it. It's a dermaplaning type thing. Anyway, I tried a couple days after that. Still the same thing. And they, I could not get those things off, even with face wash, and you end up kind of scraping at them. It was awful. I ended up using this on my legs, which have a lot more growth than peach fuzz, right? I've tried it like close to shaving, I've tried it a couple days after shaving, when everything's smooth, I tried it after epilating. It doesn't do that on the legs, so it's not the hair thing. So I don't understand what it is about just the periphery of my face that would do this. It was fine on my nose. It was fine on my forehead. If you had this happen ever, please let me know. Like, tell me I'm not alone in this. And especially if you know why this happens, I would really love to know. Because on paper, just a normal peeling gel. And I actually really liked it. I liked the smell. It smelled like real citrus and not artificial citrus fragrance. I really had a good time with it. Other than the weird sticking to the face thing, which just made it unusable. And I tried it more than once on the face, like I said. And every time, that was the experience. Next is this Clavu Pure Pearl Station pH Balancing Quick Cleansing Pad. I These are just sort of pointless. I'm going to try and find a use for them. What I thought these would be are sort of an alternative to makeup wipes. They are very saturated in some sort of solution. And it says Quick Cleansing Pad. So I thought, okay, great. It says, please gently wipe the face with the embossed side to clean the makeup and impurities and then wipe over the face with the opposite smooth side. The only time I would be inclined to use some sort of, not a makeup wipe, but a cleansing pad, which are a lot softer and just very saturated, usually in remover, is to get eye makeup off. Because sometimes that is nicer than cleansing oil. Most of the time I use cleansing oil, but if I have some sort of waterproof mascara on or just something like a lot of eye makeup and I don't want to smear it all over my face, I would use most of the time a cotton pad soaked in like Misha Perfect eye makeup remover, but something like this would be okay as well. So I tried it and it doesn't get stuff off. It's irritating. My eye got all red. I only did it on one eye. I couldn't even do it on the other eye. And I don't know, it smells citrusy, which is nice, but I think it's kind of acidic citrusy maybe, the solution itself. So it just wasn't that great. And if my face is already clean, I mean, I could wipe it off with this after that, but that seems like a triple cleanse and kind of pointless, so I'm not super sure how to use this. I think the only potential way would be in the morning. I usually don't wash my face, and I use a cotton, or not a cotton, I use a toner pad, like a hydrating toner pad, just to wipe over the face, and then I do my vitamin C. So maybe I could do this instead of my hydrating toner pad, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to waste them. I'll find some way. If you have ideas, let me know. Maybe I'll ask some friends if they want it. But it just, mm, kind of disappointed in these. Last but not least, super confusing product. It's by this brand DM Cell, and it's called PLS, Post Laser Treatment Solution. And it's supposed to be used immediately post laser to soothe the skin. I've never had laser, but from talking to people and reading some stuff online, I know that after laser hair removal, the skin is sensitive and it needs the most basic gentle products. So this is a spray and it's a wonderful spray as far as the mist that produces, it's a nice fine mist. What's super confusing is this contains salicylic acid and fragrance. And to me, if I had tender post laser skin, again, just not no personal experience, but just speaking from reading things online, I don't think I would want fragrance on it because anytime your skin barrier is compromised or your skin is sensitive, fragrance may not be the way to go. But also salicylic acid, that's a BHA, that's an exfoliant, so I'm really confused. If you've had laser and you've used something like this, let me know. Maybe I'm wrong. That's possible. I end up, I don't love the smell of it either. 
what I do is I use it on my legs because it does seem to help with some of the ingrown hair and those kinds of things. It's just little irritations as it has to do with shaving, but I can't imagine using it after actual laser. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful, if not useful, at least entertaining. If you've had some fails recently, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. You can find me on Instagram at kbeautyhobbit, my blog kbeautyhobbit.com, and in my Facebook group Korean Beauty Fanatics. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, please remember to always listen to your skin. Thank you so much. Bye.